On May 9th, a group of St. Luke's Clinic, St. Luke's Elks Children's Rehab, and Family Health Services Specialists held a panel discussion on autism for parents, families, and providers. After the meeting, an area mother of a young child with autism took a few moments to share her experience. Each panelist also shared their role in helping families navigate the confusing world of autism spectrum disorder. Clayton was diagnosed when he was two and a half with um, severe autism. Um, it was really scary. And the doctor actually said something to us uh, when Clayton was about 18 months. And I said, no, he's fine. And then when he was two and a half, I finally realized when he completely stopped eating, he went eight days with no food and no drink. We took him in to get diagnosed and he was very, very severe. And I feel like he didn't know I was his mom. Um, he was very much in his own world. He would just kind of look at a wall, rock back and forth. He wouldn't answer to his name. He screamed constantly. He screamed 23 hours a day and he slept for one hour. That was a good day. You know, the first time that parents hear the word autism or autism spectrum disorder, that can be a very unsettling and frightening diagnosis. Uh, with autism, we're looking at uh, social, social skills problems, uh, communication issues. Um, and then also some of these uh, repetitive behaviors or obsessive focus about certain types of things. There's a, a large percentage of children with autism who have some degree of intellectual disability. A lot of times anxiety, um, there's other medical problems that we can kind of see, uh, also ADHD, um, oppositional problems, um, anger and aggression occasionally. And then there are other uh, uh, potential uh, genetic disorders that may need to be screened for. Having a diagnosis of autism or pervasive developmental disorder or Asperger's disorder does not in any way automatically kick someone into a pathway for definitive treatment because there's a wide range of ways that this can present. A lot of what we do is about education and getting them uh, to the best of our ability, still getting them connected and developing a treatment plan that's going to help the child uh, to maximize uh, whatever potential that they may have. Some people need intensive behavioral intervention, behavior modifications. For a kid who has real severe sensory issues, um, maybe real reactive to sound or light, I'll recommend they see an occupational therapist. So they may need physical therapy, they may need speech therapy. Some people need medication, but all, but all of them don't. Um, my role as a speech pathologist in helping children with autism is to find out how to help them be able to communicate and to be social. So when we started the therapy, um, you know, I knew nothing of autism and what to do. So I attended every single therapy session. Children with autism often have sensory processing challenges. You know, he would just look at the wall and uh, not pay attention and not notice anyone was speaking to him. So they don't want to be touched. They don't like certain textures of foods, don't like certain clothing, um, and get very overwhelmed in situations where it's loud or crowded and may have multiple meltdowns or tantrums because of that. One day he was standing at the wall and he was banging his head on the wall and just not aware of anything and his therapist walks up, stands next to him and just starts banging her head on the wall. That's one of the hallmarks of autism is a lack of social skills. He looked at her like, what's she doing? You know, and then, so then he dropped on the floor on his back and started screaming. They have a difficulty um, interacting and understanding social cues and so I help teach them how to do that. So he's screaming and at this point he was actually having fun screaming kicking his legs and she laid on her back and started screaming and kicking her legs and I remember her shoes flying off and he looked at her again and that's when we had our turning point. It's essential for families to participate in therapy. It's essential because um, I see a child for 45 minutes to 90 minutes a week. They're with the child all week long. I've watched her. I go home and I copy everything she does. And he has come so far. You know, we never thought he'd ever speak. He was so severe. We just kind of gave up on the hope. So I had told his therapist, because she asked, you know, what kind of things does he like? And he loves Disney princess. So I, I said, he's obsessed with princess. So she started bringing in princess stuff. And he said, Snow White. And 
that really was the turning point and now he's talking. <laughs> now he is diagnosed at mild to moderate, more on the moderate side. He's being mainstreamed. He's going into kindergarten next year. They are putting him in a typical kindergarten class. He will always have autism, but he's a part of our world because we joined his world.